Hey, how's it going? So in this video, I'm going to go through the steps of setting up a 16 by 2 LCD on an Arduino. I know there's a lot of videos out there already that show you how to do this, but I'm going to go through pretty much every function available in the Liquid Crystal library and show you what, uh, what each one does and how to use it and where to put it in your code. So I will show you how to set up the LCD just real briefly. To set up the LCD, connect the jumper wire from pin 1 of the LCD over to a ground rail. Then from pin 2 of the LCD, connect a jumper wire to the positive rail. Then from pin 3 of the LCD, connect a jumper wire to the middle pin of a 10k potentiometer. This potentiometer allows you to adjust uh, the contrast of the characters. Now run a jumper wire from pin 4 of the LCD over to digital pin 12 of the Arduino. Then connect a, another jumper wire from pin 5 of the LCD to ground. Now from pin 6 of the LCD Connect a jumper wire over to digital pin 11 of the Arduino. And working from the other side, uh, pin 16 of the LCD connects to ground. Now connect a, that's about 220 ohm resistor from pin 15 of the LCD to the positive rail. And from pin 14 of the LCD, run a jumper wire over to digital pin 2 of the Arduino. Pin 13 of the LCD connects to pin 3 of the Arduino. Pin 12 of the LCD connects to pin 4 of the Arduino. Pin 11 of the LCD connects to pin 5 of the Arduino. Now the last step is connecting one outside pin of the potentiometer to ground and the other side of the potentiometer to the positive rail. And then, of course, connect the rails of your breadboard over to the uh, ground and 5 volt pins of the Arduino. And your LCD should light up like that. We're just getting a bunch of uh, gibberish right now because we don't have any code uploaded to the board. But you can see that adjusting the potentiometer adjusts the contrast. You can also replace that 220 ohm resistor with a uh, potentiometer, and that'll adjust the brightness of the backlight. Now we're ready to upload some code to the Arduino and see what we can do with this LCD. I have programs posted on my blog with examples of each of these liquid crystal functions. So I'm going to just copy and paste from there to show you what these functions do. Let's start out with a super basic hello world program just so you see what's needed just to print text to the LCD. I'm going to copy it and paste it into the Arduino IDE. And on your LCD screen, you should see something like this. Hello world. All right, let's try something a little more interesting, like the LCD clear function. We can use this function to flash text on and off on the screen. 
it uses uh, the LCD print function along with the delay and lcd.clear function. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this into the IDE. So we've got LCD print and then a 500 millisecond delay, then LCD clear, and then another 500 millisecond delay, and then it loops all back to the beginning. So once I upload this to the board, You can see we have Hello World flashing on and off at a rate of 500 milliseconds. Keep in mind that the column and row coordinates start from zero. So across the top row, we have zero to 15 columns. And from top to bottom, we have zero to one rows. And by default, the cursor is set at position zero, zero, which is the first column of the first row. To demonstrate this, let's replace the first three letters of our hello world text with uh, X's. So you can see here we have our LCD home function which places the cursor at the upper left hand corner of the screen and overwrites any text that was previously printed to it. So we have our LCD.print hello world in the void setup section. That runs first, before the program continues on to the loop section, which runs um, continuously over and over again. So if we have another lcd.print function in the loop section, it's going to overwrite whatever we have in the setup section. So now you can see that the first three letters of hello world are replaced with X's. And that's because we set the cursor at the home position. So text is going to print starting at whatever location you've set the cursor. And in the next example, we'll set the position of the cursor with the lcd.setCursor function. So we can set it anywhere we want on the screen. In this example, we'll move it to position 2, 1. So that's on the bottom row and three character positions to the right from the left side. So the void setup, we have our LCD begin, our set cursor, we set our cursor in the setup section, and we print from that cursor position, 2 comma 1. And so our hello world has moved down, so it's printed now from the second row, and three character positions over to the right. And there's other functions uh, I've got up on the blog post, but I'm um, not really going to go into them here. And we've already talked about the lcd.print function. Now the lcd.cursor function creates a blinking underlined cursor at whichever position we specify. So let's copy that code and paste it over to the IDE. Now there's two functions here, lcd.cursor, which turns the cursor on, and lcd.nocursor, which turns the cursor off. And if you want to make a blinking cursor, uh, you need to use these two functions together with a delay in between. So once we upload it to the board, you'll see that we have a blinking cursor. Since we didn't specify the location of the cursor, it ends up uh, at the next available character after any text that's printed to the screen. So since we have our hello world text, uh, it prints it the next available character after hello world. So we can use this code here to place it directly below the exclamation point in hello world. So there's our lcd.set cursor at position 12 comma 1, which sets the position of the cursor. There's our lcd.cursor function, which turns the cursor on. There's our delay of 500 milliseconds. 
and then our LCD dot set cursor at position 12 comma 1 again then LCD dot no cursor turning the cursor off with another delay of 500 milliseconds and this all loops back up to the top of the void loop section so let's have a look at what this does All right, well, there's our blinking cursor right below the exclamation point at the 12th character position on the second row. So we can also make a block style cursor instead of the underline cursor. And with the block style cursor, we don't need to do any delay or cursor on, cursor off. All we have to do is use lcd.blink and it automatically blinks. And I'll show you what that does here. So the next function is lcd.display. lcd.display along with lcd.nodisplay will turn on or off any text or cursors that are printed to the screen. So up in the void setup section we have our lcd.print hello world. Then in the void loop section we have lcd.display followed by a 500 millisecond delay, then lcd.no display, followed by another 500 millisecond delay. And you can change the time that the text is on or off by changing the uh, time delay. All right, now let's start moving some text. With the lcd.scroll display left function, we can shift any text printed to the screen to the left. It needs to be used in the void loop section. So you can see here we have our lcd.scroll display left in the void loop section. And the delay is the amount of time that each character is shifted. So it'll shift one character per second, or 1000 milliseconds, to the left. So our hello world text is shifting to the left at the rate of one character per second. And after 40 characters, it'll loop back around to the beginning. So you can fit up to 40 characters before it will start printing to the line below. So now if we use the lcd.scroll display left function with the longer text string, I'll show you what happens. It doesn't write over the hello world. It actually prints to the next line after the 40th character. So I'll go ahead and add a bunch of different letters and numbers here. Make sure we're over 40 characters in length. Now there's our hello world. And you see the letter below that, that's R. Um, that's the 41st character. So. If you have a text string longer than 40 characters, it's going to end up printing to the second row after the 40th character. Alright, the lcd.autoscroll function takes a text string and shifts it to the left or right in increments of the length of the text string. So here we're going to print ABC. We have our LCD set cursor function, which sets the position of the cursor, the LCD.auto scroll function, and LCD.print ABC with a delay of 500 milliseconds. So there's our ABC shifting to the left at the rate of three characters per 500 milliseconds. Now, if you had a text string that was uh, five characters, it would shift five characters at a time. If you had a text string that was two characters, it would shift two characters at a time. All right, now lcd.write to left sets the direction that the text prints to the screen. It doesn't have anything to do with the way text scrolls across the screen. It just has to do with the direction it's printed. So you can actually print text backwards with this function. Let's see what happens when we put lcd.write to left before lcd.print 
hello world in the void setup section. It printed backwards. Now we did have to change the position of the cursor to 12 comma 0, so the 12th column of the first row. Otherwise it would have printed off the screen to the left if we left it at the home position. And there's also a LCD dot left to right, which um, is the default of the screen, you know, that prints from left to right, which is the way we naturally read text. So that really doesn't come in very handy unless you're doing some kind of interesting special character animations or something like that. And finally, we have the LCD dot create carrier function. For this function, you can make your own characters, letters, symbols, anything. And I won't really go into how this is coded because it's in a binary language that the LCD driver reads directly. But I have a link to a special calculator in the blog post where you can go and basically draw whatever character you want and it'll give you this block of code up here. And you can just insert it into your program and it'll print out. Right now I'm going to make a degree symbol, and it looks just like that. It's a little circle. Uh, some of these functions might not seem very interesting at first glance, but I think their real power comes in combining the functions and basically experimenting um, and being creative. So I hope you had fun with that, and uh, definitely leave a comment in this comment section if you have any questions. And definitely share it uh, if you found it useful. Uh, I think other people probably find it useful too. So, alright, hope you have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Okay.